His work had the power to get killers off the street and send people to prison, but some autopsies performed by Travis County's former chief medical examiner have been called into question over the years. Did Dr. Roberto Bayardo make missteps that hindered justice in some of the most high profile crimes in Central Texas? We know prosecutors still call him to testify in murder cases to this day. Tonight, KXAN investigator Josh Hinkle lays out this body of evidence. Critics point to murder cases when Bayardo performed an autopsy, testified in court, then changed his story many years later. A babysitter on death row. She died in prison, awaiting release when Bayardo said the child in her care could have died by accident, not intentionally killed. A man within days of execution for strangling a bride to be spared and now awaiting word of an appeal after Bayardo clarified his conclusions on when that woman died. So why go back on his own testimony? We found making money could be at the root of the problem, a problem that took us through thousands of autopsies, including this woman's. Her name is in a dusty old book at the Travis County morgue, Christine Morton. Scrawled in the writing of the man who performed her autopsy in 1986, Chief Medical Examiner Dr. Roberto Bayardo. The body was found in the bedroom of the couple's home south of Georgetown, August 13th. A massive so blunt injury, blunt eight blows to the head, still in her blood-stained pink nightgown. And I proceeded to examine the rest of the internal organs. Bayardo discovered food semi-digested in her stomach, pointing him to when she last ate and when she died. That timing and his testimony helped put away Morton's husband for murder. But with the medical examiner's testimony conflicting with Morton's alibi... I did not do this. Morton's autopsy was one of nearly 800 Bayardo performed that year, a massive caseload with little oversight from county leaders. In fact, an analysis of Bayardo's near three decades in office shows he consistently performed between 395 and 823 autopsies a year, far exceeding the nationally recommended limit of 325. My workload consisted of doing about three to four autopsies every day, every single day, including weekends. In your expert opinion, is more than 800 autopsies too much? Yes, that, that is greatly excessive, and I would be very concerned about the uh, significant uh, error rate. Dr. Max um, Buya is a professor at the University of Texas Health Science Center in Houston, known nationally for his expertise in autopsies. He explained by moving through cases too quickly, a medical examiner runs a risk. Inaccurate diagnoses regarding the cause of death, and also the manner of death. Somebody had to do the work, and there was nobody else to do it. Did you ever have concerns that doing that many autopsies a year um, might present challenges with anything in court? I never thought about that. You are released subject to the terms and conditions of the bond. Thank God this wasn't a capital case. That I only had life. 25 years after Christine Morton's murder, her husband was cleared of the crime. The fight for his freedom included a sworn statement from Bayardo, saying the way he determined when Morton died was not scientific. That statement made us wonder what else would Christine Morton's autopsy report reveal. The county where she was killed didn't have its own medical examiner, so they brought her body here to Bayardo in Travis County, along with $250 for his work. I was angry about it. I mean, I, it just it made me indignant. And then I remember him giving us some resistance about telling us, well, how much did you earn? Dr. Bayardo. Former Travis County Judge Bill Alshire says he discovered in the early 90s the ME was supplementing his salary by examining corpses for other counties. It shows how many autopsies he did, and it shows how much money he got. That was a financial incentive for him to see how many autopsies he could do. Doing the coronary removals okay. and doing the tissue work. That passes unanimously. Travis County commissioners eventually came to a formal agreement to handle the funds. The commissioner's court does not authorize you to continue doing autopsies for them unless we have a contract in place. The contract made sure the county made money, even though Bayardo would still keep a cut. And this arrangement did not slow him down. Over time, Bayardo raked in around $2.6 million performing autopsies for 45 other counties. Bayardo had operated independently without any oversight for way too long. Frankly, in my opinion, he blew it. And 
uh, I think he stayed longer than he should have. I earned it. Uh, I had the capacity to do it and the profession professional knowledge to do it. So what's the problem? The problem is Bayardo's work and the medical examiner's office faced heavy criticism in the early 2000s like the accuracy of his conclusions in a police shooting. Daniel Rocha's preliminary report showed him having no drugs in his system. Later, the pathologist detected marijuana. The misidentification of a body. The autopsy described the body as 23-year-old Clayton Daniels, but a DNA test showed it was the corpse of 81-year-old Charlotte Davis. And the lack of national accreditation, which would have helped ensure quality and standards. It was something we discovered Bayardo never sought in 28 years on the job. Is there anything that you wish you would have done differently as chief medical examiner? Absolutely no. Nothing? Nothing. I did everything to the best of my abilities, to the best of my knowledge, and I don't have no, no remorse, uh, no problems. Bayardo stepped down in 2006, but Travis County prosecutors still call him to testify about autopsies he performed. In fact, we've learned this summer he's on the list of witnesses in the trial against Mark Norwood, who police say beat this woman, Deborah Baker, to death in her own bed in 1988. Turns out, two years before, Norwood was the actual killer of the woman in our story, Christine Morton. Critics say had Bayardo done things right with Morton's autopsy, Baker might still be alive today, and we will follow that trial very closely. Josh, I'm curious what uh, Bayardo had to say in his defense. That he didn't have enough money or resources. We do know eventually, though, he did get more staff and money and even a new morgue, and his caseload was still very high. And could Bayardo ever face anything legally because of everything you've uncovered? Well, the Texas Medical Board typically hasn't gone after medical examiners unless there was clear evidence an autopsy was deliberately mishandled, which could open open the door for criminal or civil cases, but with Bayardo, there's no proof of that, and he's not practicing anymore. Josh, thank you very much. We know you will stay on top of this case, and we did check and found the Travis County Medical Examiner's Office did eventually receive national accreditation and will soon have a new facility. Today, it has better records and more staff who no longer receive money for out-of-county autopsies. Online now, body of evidence, a medical examiner's missteps. Go inside our reporting with Josh and KXAN investigator David Barrer. They walk you through these case files that point to a problematic history within this Travis County Department. Interviews with the medical examiner himself and an interactive breakdown of his autopsies and his high profile testimony in court. It's all in the investigative section of KXAN.com. In recent years, this man, Dr. Roberto Bayardo, has changed his testimony in some of the most high-profile murder cases in Central Texas history. It led some people to wonder whether his work wrongfully sent people to prison and helped the real killers roam free. A KXAN investigation first revealed the massive number of autopsies he performed over his three decades as Travis County's chief medical examiner. It far exceeds the current national standard, something experts tell KXAN investigator Josh Hinkle could have led to rushed procedures and possible missteps. That's right, Shannon. We also discovered money might have been his motive as he raked in about $2.6 million extra in pay by performing autopsies for 45 other counties without their own medical examiners. And tonight, we revealed the money has not stopped coming in, even though he resigned a decade ago. Prosecutors are still using him to build their cases to this day, even though he admits to KXAN he's forgetting crucial details in some of the worst murders in Central Texas history. This was a brutal, brutal murder. In November of 1980, 73-year-old Mildred McKinney was asleep in her bed in this Williamson County duplex where she lived alone. Someone came in the back door and brutally raped her, beat her, strangled her. McKinney's murder shocked neighbors and devastated her daughter, who discovered the body. And when I got to the bedroom, I could see my mother's legs hanging up out from the bathroom. More than 30 years went by before police matched a fingerprint at the crime scene to this man, Stephen Allen Thomas. Did not come as a surprise to him uh, that he was being taken into custody. In 2012, Thomas finally went to trial. Mildred's torture 
Grandma Mimi's torture was a deliberate act. And on the stand was the man who had performed McKinney's autopsy, <laughs> Dr. Roberto Bayardo. He said the woman's injuries were the worst he had ever seen. And I proceeded to examine the rest of the internal organs. Bayardo had resigned years before in 2006, but since then, prosecutors have still used his testimony in at least seven murder cases in which he performed the autopsies long ago, like Mildred McKinney's. As long as I'm alive, alive uh, I'll be probably be asking, asked to testify and answer some other questions and I'll be available to do it. When we interviewed Bayardo last fall, he admittedly had trouble recalling details of the high profile cases in his autopsy logbooks. I don't have no recollection at all. I'm getting too old, my memory has faded a lot, so I don't have no recollection of all cases. Cross-examination of a medical examiner in a homicide case is one of the most important moments for a judge or jury in assessing what the outcome of the case should be. Sam Bassett is an Austin defense attorney who once chaired the state's Forensic Science Commission. He says Bayardo could have an ethical obligation to report his memory problems to the court. It could lead to inaccurate testimony. It could lead to a jury being misled as to important scientific opinion and data. Should prosecutors look at cases that he has recently been involved in and question maybe his testimony in those? I think those cases should be examined, yes. What's the possible outcome of that? A, a new trial. Uh, I would I'll obviously think another medical examiner may need to be brought in to review his findings and to see if there are any errors that, that need to be pointed out. And then the other option is dismissing the case. Bassett also says it's critical a medical examiner is able to remember details beyond what's written in an autopsy report. Still, Bayardo says that report is his mental security, even if it's only a summary of what the procedure might have revealed. How do you look at a report but not remember what you said back then and be able to give accurate statements? Uh, I won't be able to do that. You shouldn't be used in these cases as they're coming back up? I'm just being asked to go and testify and I do the testifying. So it's up to them to, uh, to realize those things. We spoke with the Travis County District Attorney's Office about what Bayardo told us about forgetting things. They said the autopsy report is meant to jog his memory, and if it doesn't, they could always call for a second opinion and possibly not even use him on the stand. And yes, he is on a list of possible witness testimony in the upcoming trial against Mark Norwood for the murder of Deborah Baker later this year. And we spoke with Bayardo this past week. What did he say about that trial? If he is called to testify, he said he is going to have to read from that autopsy report. Josh, his memory issues, the high number of autopsies, even changing his testimony. Why hasn't someone done something about this yet? Well, it's tough to prove that there was an intentional mistake made. And again, he's no longer practicing, but he is still getting paid for most of his testimony, anywhere between $500 and $600 per testimony. You and the investigative team have been digging into this story for more than a year now, and online now you can check out our interactive feature, Body of Evidence, a medical examiner's missteps. Josh and investigator David Barrer take you inside the cases in which Bayardo has walked back his testimony and how it's impacted lives in Central Texas. Online now in the investigative section of KXAN.com. Thanks, Josh.